middle call. Hey, hey. All right, John, on to the Haberman and Middlecoff mailbag. Very easy to get in. You go to Apple Podcasts. You leave us a review. Five stars. We appreciate it. And um, leave us a question. Any question at all. And uh, maybe if you want your favorite bar. I did check today, Middlecoff, on Spotify. We are 4.9 stars. with, But I think I don't think you can actually write words in a review. You can just rate. We're 4.9? We're four we're four nine. That's pretty good. I mean, yeah, that's I'm happy a, with it. A, you know, a plus, basically, right? Yeah, I think it's pretty. Are you getting to Stanford on a four nine? Well, could you on a four nine? Oh, well, four nine. Yeah, oh yeah. I thought you meant out of five. Yeah, you know, you need to be four nine out of what's four nine out of four? Yeah, four nine. You're right. We need a five nine to get into Stanford. Four nine yeah. with, with a very good letter. And yeah. um, work charity since you're five. Uh, yeah, help the top, homeless. Right. Overcame. Yeah, scoliosis hit you know 19 home runs as a true freshman on the varsity. Like you, you need a lot of things going for you. Yeah, definitely have invented something. Been to 17 countries by the time you're six. <laughs> I've dug a lot of wells in other nations. Yeah, that was not our resume coming out of high school. It was like, uh, you know, I uh, I like watching ESPN and I'm a good guy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, umpired, uh, coached some summer league uh, youth basketball once. Yeah, uh, umpired Little League Davis. Uh, worked at Special Olympics once in high school. Did you? Yeah. That's impressive. I don't remember I didn't who have, I didn't have that on the resume. It was actually a very good time. Highly recommend. Don't sleep on, don't sleep on Haberman being a high character guy. So, yeah, well. Uh, but also selfish. You know, weird combination. Uh, all right. So here we go. Time to dive into the mailbag. Let's start off with this. Mahomes versus Allen. Amazing show. Love that you guys don't only talk Niners, but love that you talk a lot of Niners. You've converted me into a fan. My question is one I've been pondering for months now, and I qu- I can't quite decide. Who is better at quarterback, Mahomes or Josh Allen? Mahomes is great, obviously, and I thought the answer was him easy, but after last season, I'm not so sure. Josh Allen goes crazy. Who do you guys think will have a better year? I think Mahomes has the coaching advantage, but he lost Tyreek. Allen lost his OC, uh, but I'm not sure how much that'll matter. I can't decide myself. Would like you to decide for me. Thanks, dudes. You're the best. Five stars. I feel you, Doug. I, I mean, I, I still think you have to give the slight edge to old Patrick. You know, it's kind of like the LeBron-Kevin Durant debate. It's like LeBron's a better player than Kevin Durant and has been the majority of his career. There might have been moments like Josh Allen might have slightly been better than him in that game. But if you remember, Patrick Mahomes was incredible in that game. And if you also remember, because I remember tweeting this out, like Mahomes is ready for the Super Bowl, half time, going almost to halftime of that Bengal game. He threw three touchdowns. It wasn't until that swing pass to Tyreek, which was a disaster, that then his that last half of football is what we remember. But Mahomes was brilliant guy the second half of the season. Because remember, he was shitty early on for his standards. And then he played the Raiders, and then he never looked back, and they just started kicking everyone's ass, and then they went into the playoffs and won that game. And even the first half of the Bengal game, he was awesome. I, I, I would say Mahomes is still better. Now, you could argue this. Mahomes has Kelsey and Hill, and now he just has Kelsey, so we're going to learn more about him. And and Josh is really, I mean, Diggs is a borderline star, but I, I, the other guys like Beasley and – Dalton Knox, I think, is the tight end's name. Like he, I wouldn't say he's playing with, you know, Kittle, Jerry Rice, and DK Metcalf, right? Uh, that is true. Is it Dalton? Dawson. Dawson. Yeah, close. Good name. Um, I don't think it's crazy that Josh Allen could surpass Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes won now, an MVP and won a Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, his career, he is more accomplished. But if you said... I. I guess the way I'm looking at this question is, you know, uh, you let every NFL coach take one of them. Would any of them take Josh Allen? Would some of them take Josh Allen? Would 10 of them take Josh Allen? Would 12 of them take Josh Allen? Probably not. But I think a couple of them might. Um, Now, you know, he's like a year younger. He's played in one less. uh, I guess they've actually played kind of the same number of NFL seasons. Josh is 25. Uh, he'll turn, he turned 25 in May. Mahomes will turn 27 in September. So Mahomes is actually two years older. Gotcha. Josh Allen's two years younger. I love on football reference where they put in parentheses, the guy's nickname, like Josh Allen's nickname is general. 
Mahomes' nickname is Grim Reaper, Showtime Magic Man, the mu musician, Fatrick, the glun gunslinger, or Mahome Boy. Uh, no one calls him any of those things. That's a lie, all of those. I, I, I do think I, I didn't watch probably any more than 30 minutes of it. But when you watch them on the golf course together, it does feel like they're pretty similar packages as human beings, which as we're seeing with Deshaun Watson and even, you know, Baker Mayfield, while not criminal or even civil, Baker's got some, like, it does matter who you are as a person at quarterback. And you would say both their characters, if you just ask around the league, are viewed as pristine, right? Yeah, yeah. As, as guys you'd want in your building, as teammates, as people that are beloved. You know, you could argue, could you go wrong? Like if Mahomes had been with Andy, excuse me, if Allen, if Josh Allen had been drafted by the Chiefs, are we talking about Josh Allen like we do Patrick Mahomes? Now he needed a little more work, right? Patrick just needed the year. I would say Josh needed like two, two and a half. But I, I, what you could argue, do we really need to argue this? Like, can we just, I think what's cool is like, we can just, I'm not saying, obviously this is a good question. It's a fun talking point. Yeah, it's, we do, but it's just like, they're both badasses. You yeah, know, it's like I, Marino Elway. It's like those guys are both sweet. I, I think the fair way to really have this conversation, and to me, what's interesting about this question is saying everyone defaults to Mahomes. Is there going to be a time where people will lean, where, where popular opinion will be actually Josh Allen's better? I think we're there. You think people lean Josh Allen now? No, no, no. I think yeah. that conversation going into this season is there. Yes, and I think part of what stands in Josh Allen's way is what you described, the accomplishments, but he, maybe he wins an MVP this year. I mean, their numbers last year were so similar. Uh, Mahomes attempted 658 passes. Allen attempted 646 passes. So Mahomes attempted 12 more passes, uh, threw for 400 more yards, basically, he threw 37 touchdowns. Josh Allen threw 36. Mahomes, 13 picks. Josh Allen, 15. On and on and on. I think they're pretty similar. I think the question, big picture, there were times when Mahomes feels a little loosey-goosey, right? And can he ever fully like dial in the still being the superstar that does all the amazing stuff, but just just dial just dial it in a little bit less loosey goosey. And maybe with Andy, that'll never happen, right? Maybe that's part of what makes Patrick Mahomes great is you don't try and dial that down. Well, you want to, I think here are the comps. I think Mahomes is the modern day Favre, and yeah. I think Josh Allen is the modern day John Elway. And I think both those two guys are I think John Elway is viewed better. So it's not a, an apples down. Apples and I think comparison. Favre is viewed I mean, is Mahomes that reckless? Is he as reckless? No, as no, that's why that's why I called him the modern day. He's less reckless. Oh, the game modern day just easier. means modern day, though. I, I know, but I'm just saying I like this, like this modern day version. version of the NFL. Yeah. So do you like that comp? Yeah, I do actually like that comp. Because I was thinking like in the 80s and probably even the early 90s. And Montana wasn't as gifted as like the guys we're talking about. But right. no one would say that John Elway was better than than Joe Montana. But, like, physically, Joe Montana couldn't hold John Elway's jock in terms right. of size, but, arm strength. But if right? I told you, yeah, but if I told you Brett Favre replaced Joe Montana, like, you take Joe Montana out and you pre you put the version of Brett Favre we had into that Bill Walsh team, do they win more or less Super Bowls? I would say less. You know, I I, I mean, they got to back-to-back -back in his prime. He won three straight MVPs. I, I think they would have been pretty good. They would have been, but I think so much of that team was based on just here's what Bill Walsh says to do. You have to do it pre with precision, and that's different yeah. than Brett's mo. True, he did that, lose his star coach though. Pretty, I'd say far. Remember in like ninety nine, two thousand, like he only had Holmgren for like five six years, and then that's Holmgren true. bounced. That's true. Uh, C money Clay says over under. This is the next question. Thumbs up, five stars. Over under Trey Lance twenty two passing touchdowns this year. Over. I think that's pretty close to the number. Um, I think you and I have talked about this before, maybe in the range of like 26 to 27 touchdowns with maybe 13 picks. Garoppolo was 20 picks, 12 interceptions. Garoppolo's best year was 27 touchdowns and 13 picks. And Damn. even though we know they're, they are, you know, from a skill standpoint, different, like we, you and I talked about this a lot, Kyle's not going to want to just pull the reins off completely this year with Trey Lance. He shouldn't have to. No. But the wide receivers are sweet. I, I, I'm i going to go 
Could be a prisoner of the moment because we just saw them all the last week. I'm going to go 28. 28? 28 I'm, would be very, very productive, wouldn't you? Would you I agree? would say 28 would be – and what – I'd say 28 would be very successful. And how many picks – what's the most number of interceptions he could throw where you still feel good about 28 touchdowns? 13, 14. Because he's going to have a game where he throws four. Yeah, well, he's just going to throw some picks. I mean, it's just <laughs> – it's going to happen. I mean, last year, Derek Carr was 23 touchdowns, 14 picks. The year before, he was 27 touchdowns, nine picks. I'm going over 22. I'm going to go a little. I, I would say, though, the difference with Derek, like his high pick, because that wouldn't you say that's a high pick number for his like his emergence as a really Yeah, 14 is the highest he's ever had. Their receivers, once Ruggs killed the guy, just kind of sucked. Waller got injured. He, he was forcing it to some randoms. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just in terms of football. Like, I, I'm more looking at his touchdown number. His high 32 is second year than 28, 22, 19, 21, 27. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think Trey will probably be a little more aggressive down the field than Derek historically has been. Yeah. Doesn't always I'm not mean saying he's better touchdowns. than, I'm not trying to say he's better than Derek right now. Cause obviously, if, if Trey was equally as good as Derek, I would bet on the 49ers win the Super Bowl. I think he'll be good on the. I think he'll be good in the red zone, but they also can run the football a ton in the red zone, and he can run the ball in the red zone. So I'm I'm going to go over 22. I'm going to go 26. Yeah, 26 touchdowns for uh, old old Trey Lance. Next up, John. This comes from Austin. It's his longtime listener. Started listening to John probably over three years ago, and then found this one by accident. Love your stuff. Look forward to listening to your both podcasts religiously. Keep up the good work. Keep making that bacon. Oh. Question. <laughs> what the, the, the thought of bacon yeah it sounds good like you know just sit crackling in the in the stove you you would actually rather have bacon than the money that this guy's talking about yeah for sure right now uh josh Al josh allen for mvp i'm telling you you get a ton of buzz right now for most valuable player well, i know I, I i he's the favorite <laughs> yeah then mahomes <laughs> I mean, oh, you're Rogers saying you're saying back. you're saying he literally is the favorite. He's the favorite. Yeah, I'm looking at the odds right now. I don't like him then as much. <laughs> uh, Allen Mahomes, then Rogers, Brady, Herbert's going to get a lot of love. What's he? For MVP. He's fourth in the uh, or fifth here. What kind of odds are we talking? Like ten to one? Uh, what, plus eleven hundred? Was that eleven to one? As I don't hate that. Do you? No, but I, that means you're going to be in a very awkward position this year. Again, I, I can take my emotion out of it. It's I not like about emotion. Him. I'm just saying you, you're saying you would start rooting for the Chargers if you had a Justin Herbert bet. But I already kind of do. Would actually I, make you hate Brandon Staley extra if they screw some stuff up. Guy, I think he became arguably my favorite player in the league last year, and I thought the coach was a clown. Like I, I'm rooting for him to dominate. Yes. He's just – he's equally as fun. I mean, we just talked about the other two guys. People get mad when I do it, but I put him in that category. Well, I know I think, he's early. You think he's as good, you're saying? Well, I think there are I, some people that think he could, like right now you would take Herbert if you could pick any quarterback. I had multiple guys play. on teams. You know, they just evaluate the league for their team, right? It's just they, they have a grade on every player that the team does. And he was top five on both these teams. Mm -hmm. Now, so were the other two guys. Yeah. You know, Rodgers was one. Mahomes, Allen were like two, three, Brady. And then it was him. Both teams had him as a top five quarterback. People freak out like, well, he won nine games. Well, yeah, his fucking coach was going forward on the 18 yard line. They, did you? I went back the other day and looked at the numbers from that Raider game. You know, the, when we were sitting, I was sitting in that hotel and we were watching it before we did the Niner Rams thing. He remember how awesome he was in that thing, the throws he made. Remember how fucking dominant he was on the road. It was not his fault they lost that game, at all. They were there because of him. I would say. Debo Samuel and Mitchell Trubisky have the same odds. I would uh, not put any money on old Mitch. Is, are we sure Mitch is going to be the starter? Who? Who? Why, why would I don't even keep Mitchell Trubisky? Why, why does Mitchell Trubisky have better odds than Devontae Adams <laughs> or Matt Ryan? What is this? What's 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 Matty Ice's odds? That's a, eight that thousand a plus eight thousand. Do you, I mean, do you hate 80 to one if he could throw like 36 touchdowns and they were like the two seed? Uh, what I would, he have, hate, what would I, he have to do? Yeah, I mean, 30, it'd have to be touchdowns in the high 30s, which they don't really have receivers, so probably not. That's usually what it takes. I mean, Cooper Cup. All right, next up. I consume this is from uh, Kegbert. 
Kegbert. I consume an immense amount of sports media, and H&M are pound-for-pound pound goats, in my humble opinion. As a Sacktown Niner fan, I wish they'd take it a little easier on the Kings, but I'd be lying if I said the criticism was unfair. Add this pod to your lineup and thank me later. Hashtag hardest working podcasters. Hashtag blue collar mentality. Grinders. I mean, the Kings, do they have the longest running non-playoff appearance streak going in American sports? It was 17 years. Uh, it's been a long time. I don't know what the number is. That sounds it's about been, right. It's been a while. They've been in the lottery every year for that many years. If you're problems. a Kings fan, you're pretty hard on the Kings. I mean, I don't who Why would anybody not be hard on the Kings? Other than I mean, they like Doug Christie or they like Bobby Jackson, like like us. Those Could guys survive. But Mike Mike Brown keep them our boys. Uh, better. How do you, you can't get? Well, I mean, Bobby was coaching the G League team and Doug was on the. You can't get rid of Doug Christie. You'd be no, criminal. You can't. I'd be no. out on Mike Brown. In fact, I would text Mike Brown right now and tell him I'm out on him. Are you friends with him? No, but I went to text our buddy Mike Brown, the Davis High star Utah. turn Utah assistant baseball coach the other day. Yeah. I saw him a few weeks ago. Yeah. And I went to text Mike Brown and I didn't have his number. And I realized Mike Brown, the basketball coach, had once texted me when I was doing a college basketball game because his son Elijah was playing for one of the teams. And he wrote, I don't know, he got my number probably from Raymond Ritter or something. And he texted me, say, Hey guy, this is Mike Brown, Elijah's dad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then well, I, so now I have Mike Brown NBA and Mike Brown DHS Davis High School. I will go easier on him. Do you think it's crazy if you send him a text and see if we can get him talk? We haven't texted him this since uh, we haven't texted since uh, 2017. Well, he wouldn't forget about you. But um, last text was <laughs> was hey, somebody been on the du- uh, Oregon or something? I said, "Look like a tough one for the Ducks." We'll be watching Steph's return from Eugene. Happy New Year! Thanks, buddy. He said, <laughs> "That's hilarious." So I wouldn't say we're boys, no. And uh, okay. yeah. Anyway, there you go. There was the breakdown. He had some. He had some. His kids were playing. All right. But reading text messages is uh, lame. Uh, Raphael says, "Love the pod. Love your guys' chemistry. How long have you been friends? Give us a good old Haberman and Middlecoff story." Three weeks. <laughs> uh. Well, I mean, we're going on twenty year high school reunion, so I mean, we're talking two thousand one. Yeah, I mean, we're we're talking over twenty years. Two thousand one, probably. We we went to Mount Shasta when senior year of high school. Uh, Thomas, we, 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 who's, who's friends the, before that? But I'm just saying, we're talking yeah. a long time. One story I thought of when I saw this was when we went. In, what year did we go to Vegas for the summer league? Draymond's rookie year. Yeah, that I mean, I lived. Was I Fresno State? What was that? Would, that would have been 2012. That was the first year I was on the West Coast. Did we go to the to summer league twice or once? Once, once. Dame Lillard, Harrison Barnes, all those guys. Yeah, Draymond was there as a rookie. We, uh, I was thinking we met a guy who at the time was not a very prominent NBA media member. Now I would say he's a very prominent NBA media member. Strauss, not Strauss. Who told us a story about oh, a, yeah, yeah. about another very prominent then and very prominent now media member who likes hookers? That in Ve- we were out in Vegas and we ran into this guy at a casino. I don't specifically that. remember the story, but I know exactly who you're talking about. He does. Wouldn't you say he's a unique media member? Like he's got a kind of a the current the guy who told us the who we met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's kind of got him his on own my lane. radio show in Fresno, and I DM'd him like, "Hey, man, we're going to be at summer league." Let's meet up, and we met up, and he told us this story about a guy who loves hookers. Is there a chance he's one of those media members that also then worked in the NBA and now is back in the media? <laughs> Not giving away too much. Uh, p- potentially, yes. Yeah, <laughs> Not the hooker guy, the the guy who we knew. I like his name. Yeah. Giving so, away. Uh, much, right? that was that was that was one. I mean, I don't. I. I God, countless story. That's a good question. We have to come up with story time sometime. Uh. Well, I, I did live with Guy when I worked at Fresno State. Now, this isn't exactly like, you know, uh, Grant Cohn versus Kinlaw, but <laughs> there was one radio station, and it obviously talked a lot about Fresno State football. That's a big deal in the Valley. And I wouldn't say Guy was critical, but, I mean, the dogs were probably underachieving during that period of time, <laughs> viewed around town. I think there, the expectations were higher. And I always had to skirt 
obviously the people that I work with at Fresno State, the coaching staff, people knew that I lived with Guy. They were friends with Guy. People liked Guy. But the head coach who, you know, I'm 23 years old, 24. I would say intimidation, not because he didn't like me. He was a great to me, Coach Hill. I was just very, very cognizant of the fact that I had to be careful about saying that I lived. And the irony is guy worked, the guy that owned the radio station was a former Fresno State football player and his close friends with Pat Hill and was always around. So it was, it's not as contentious as it probably some of these situations and like, you know, like a radio host in Boston against like Belichick or something. But, you know, I, then Haberman had this interaction at a Hawaii game where Coach Hill like got really mad at him. And, and then everyone's like, oh, he's going to find out you live with him. He's going to fire you. Kind of tongue in cheek. But I always thought about it. <laughs> Again, we, we had like a 40 point lead. And then Guy said, you almost blew the lead. And Pat Hill did not take kindly to blowing the lead. And even though you were you weren't in the wrong, we kind of did blow the lead. Uh, but we did win the game, and Coach Hill was always very, you know, I think it's fair to say a little insecure about the uh, <laughs> the standing of, of his football team and uh, the way that Haberman talked about him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. I didn't quite re- – I don't think at the time I appreciated that was an awkward situation for you. But it, but it really wasn't because it didn't come up that much. But it was all – it was the elephant in the room at certain times because Coach yeah. Hill was a classic like uh, – your classic coach player that's like, I don't listen to shit. And it's like, yeah, 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 you yeah. go into his office, it's blaring. You know? <laughs> remember remember when Coward came to Fresno, like he was friends with Colin with Colin because yeah. he listened to his show. Yeah. And they yeah. became buddies. Like yeah. Col- actually, Coach Hill reminds me a lot of Andy that way. Like, remember that guy that just told us they consume a lot of sports media? Like those guys do too. Like you go into there, right. you know, it's like first take would be on, Coward be on, the right. NCAA tournament be on. They they watch baseball. Like well, that's just, the irony. Sports is, fans. That's the irony is uh, when you're like when you watch first take or you know one of those like shows that you're like these takes are too extreme. I can't watch this. I'm gonna go listen to a podcast. Something. Those are the guys that watch that because they just have a TV. They turn on ESPN. They're old. Like they are the they are the people that grew up just watching. They just turn on ESPN and whatever ESPN gives them is what they watch. Right. So you watch into a coach's office in 2008. It just around the horn and PTI. That's what would be on. But but so but honestly, the ones that watch that stuff. But the thing is, like, if you were just with a football coach who's into that stuff, like, they would walk by and they'd be like, "What's this deal with LeBron James?" Like, they have takes too. You know, it's like one hundred percent. They talk like normal people talk. Uh, a per Deramo says, "Love the pod. My favorite bar is Petco Park. Every game and event is beautiful. The weather and ambiance, plus a quick Uber ride for most residents." Question. When is Guy starting his solo pod three and out style? This podcast is becoming a little too Niner centric for some of us non Niner fans. I used to skip 98% of the show, but now I just hate listen. I can't wait to hear the takes mid season when they're three and nine. Is this a uh, Raider fan? Uh, I don't know. We, we have no evidence. You can well, draw whatever conclusions you want to draw, but I, it's just a good time to announce that yes, I am starting Raider Nation Guy, a podcast <laughs> just about the Raiders. Yep. I, I, I'm, I'm very excited. We're going to launch that thing. Um, and I, you know, who's your first guest? Uh, JT, the toolman. JT. Yeah. J- J- uh, Br- Musburger is going to join us to talk about his three years as the voice of the Raiders. Just is, did Musburger, uh, you and I have talked about this personally, but was he relieved of his duties? Did he retire? What's, what's, what are you hearing out there on the streets, guy? Uh, you know, I've heard something on the streets, John, from very good sources. Um, and I have not been told explicitly. Well, actually, two different people have. Somebody had a theory. They gave somebody in the league gave me a theory. Someone's in the broadcasting world. Somebody else who uh, is very close to the situation as well. Uh, I think the, the the feeling is that he did not choose to walk away. So, are you telling me within the last three football seasons that Greg Papa and Brent Musburger? <laughs> who I would say historically when it comes to athletics would go down probably top two or three all-time voice. And Greg Papa locally is one of, you know, an all-time local legend have been relieved of their duties. Again, Greg Papa and Brent Musburger have been fired by the, uh, by the Raiders. Again, I can't confirm that's what happened with Brent, but that's the way based on the information I've received that it feels. It'll be interesting to see. In in your time of, of, of being in the industry, Haberman, and following this stuff, how many in obviously networks change people and guys move around? How many individual teams have you ever seen 
get rid of two talented people at that level in such a short period of time in your it's career. It's not common. I would say it's not common. Yeah. It's not common. Now, the one thing is Brent is Brent's old. Almost in his mid he's in his mid eighties, basically. Yeah. Uh because ABC got rid of him, you know, what, five, yeah, six years ago. Yeah, right? they replaced him with Fowler. And um But he's still Musburger, right? But he's still Musburger. And you could argue, like, if you're taking a job at 81, you'd still want it at 84, right? I thought, now, owned, I, mean, I thought he owns the thing in Vegas. Decent? Yeah, I think he's a part owner. Maybe so, they sold yeah, out. Yeah, I, I think it's his thing. Somebody, again, around broadcasting in the NFL told me, they actually said to me, like, was it because of what he said about Gruden? And I was like, I, I didn't even know he said something about Gruden, but this guy thought that he'd said something about Gruden that could have got him in. Positively or negatively? No, ne well, I... Yeah, good question. I don't know. More the Gruden situation. but Why, why is that the team, guy, where you're always just kind of walking on eggshells with what you say, yet they claim to be like this renegade organization? Like, what are you? Are you, are you freaking out all isn't the time, that, or are you the renegades? Isn't that usually the case? If you, are so, if you call yourself a renegade, you're probably not a renegade. If, you know, if you're the person who always says, like, I just tell like it is, I'm an honest man, uh, maybe I should be a little suspicious of the things you tell me. Yeah, I, right? I, got, that, I got that renegade uh, motto as red flag moving forward. Uh, boo, 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 boo. next up from Niner Ryan. Love you guys mainly for the Niners talk, but I appreciate the wider discussion of sports as well. I live in LA. I root for the Dodgers. I know it's a strange combination, the Niners and the Dodgers. I was wondering if you guys could provide me some suggestions of other podcasts or sports personalities that you enjoy for other California teams, like the Dodgers, the Giants, the A's, etc. I haven't found anything similar to y'all for the Dodgers. Would appreciate it. So is this guy want an A's podcast or no? Well, that, that's actually another announcement that we have probably have coming in two weeks. The guy is coming out with A's Daily, and it's actually going to be a pre- and post-game show. He'll do a he'll do a 30-minute breakdown of the lineup and the, the that day starting pitcher, and then post-game will break down all the action. He will – I think we're going to start that, what, uh, June 20th? So just in, yeah. you know, 11 days. The big tease is you're going to join me on all the A's post-games. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> uh, it's a good question. I don't know. I mean, maybe um, uh, maybe Petros and Money have, you know, their daily podcast. They probably talk some Dodgers. I don't know what a, I don't, I don't listen to Dodgers podcast necessarily. I don't really listen to team specific podcasts at all. Um, so I can't say. Uh, Warriors, Warriors plus minus the only one I listen yeah, to. Yeah, Warriors plus minus or all 82 or whichever plus minus. I think um, they've kind of merged. I did catch them Thursday morning after, you know, game two, game three, I guess, was it, it's a 9 p.m. tip off. So I think they recorded the show like Thursday morning after the Wednesday game. And uh, sounded like our boy Slater could have used a second cup of coffee before they fired that thing up. But <laughs> uh, well, it's I a good show. For like five minutes when I showered, it sounded like Marcus was like in another building. He was in another room. What was going on? <laughs> okay. I thought it was just me. Yeah, but, like, what is going on? That that show I don't blame is, them. Uh, they got a lot of moving parts. Uh, that's I, I I think that shows great content on a baseball I specific. And, and I heard I remember when Carabas used to work at Barstool, and then I think DraftKings gave him a ton of money to come, and I think he brought his he does stuff for them. Him and Dave used to argue. I think it's very very difficult, uh, and I, you would say that like Carabas is probably a pretty unique young guy, all in on baseball, like you or me or people are in football or the NBA, his passion and his love. Like I, I, I feel it, you know, I mean, I, I like following him because I think he really loves baseball and Dave, like he could only get so big, like the, the audience for baseball, it, it sucks for them, but it's, I think it's very, very difficult. Like, I think it's easy. Not let me rephrase this. If you're good and, and you know what you're doing, you can develop a pretty big following with basketball and football college too like the sec obviously the nfl and the nba the nba and college football college even college basketball i would say for you know probably 10 12 brands i i do think it's very very difficult for baseball and maybe the yankees would be the one that and even john boy when you say has kind of expanded they talk a little bit of cricket. everything they, they do cricket he does cricket <laughs> uh i'll give you two other podcasts i i, I mean i listen to a lot of podcasts so i'm going to leave somebody out the Audible, if you like college football, I think is a with uh, Bruce Feldman and Stuart Mandel. It's very good. I always, I, especially during football season, I always like Jeff Schwartz's podcast. Um, I got a lot of. It's hard for me to sift through podcasts, but um, does the Audible go year round? Uh, I mean, they just had their last one was June one, so 
I need a little college football. Just off season stuff. Something, something. Yeah. Uh, John, before we go any further, <laughs> let's tell the people about Shopify. That sound you hear is the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business so upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Mm. Tougher word than you think to say. And not to break any news here, but you know, hey, we're in the middle cough. You know, we've we, we've dabbled in our uh, in the merchandise entrepreneurial space, and we might be diving back in and working directly with Shopify. They empower millions of businesses like ours very soon. They reach customers online across social networks in the ever growing suite channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, synchronize your online and in person sales. Obviously, so many of us. Uh, you know, start businesses now or just in the recent, you know, in the last couple of years, everything is so based on the internet. Uh, that's where all your sales are. And that's where Shopify comes in. They're more than a store. They grow with you. Uh, can't recommend them enough. Go to shopify.com slash ham. That's all lowercase H A M all lowercase shopify.com slash ham for a free 14 day trial to get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash ham, a lowercase, right now. That's shopify.com slash ham. Did you have something to add? No, keep going. Uh, Next up, mailbag from Tolaris. Easy five stars. One of the few buddy pods that doesn't reek of suppressed sexual tension. Whoa. What kind of pods do you listen to? I didn't know buddy pods was a subcategory of pods. I didn't either. Uh, I knew there were buddy products, like every product that gets sold. It's like, meet and John. Meet John and Guy. They identified a problem in podcasting, and they decided to change the landscape. That's every product. This is a good one. You know, meet James and his dad, Williams. James, at 30 years old, had erection problems. Luckily, his dad was a doctor, and they developed Get... Well, there's only one ad. That's the real thing. (laughs) I'm John and Guy. We realized that watches were expensive. Yeah. Every we've read those ads before. There's a million of them. It's we've crazy. been shaving for Probably years. Two and it, it was too expensive. So here's a new razor cut. How are they all two people? Just two you dudes. Know? Every problem is two dudes. So congratulations to all the two dudes out there. Yeah. Uh, question. Says this. Uh, says Tolaris. Who is the most handsome quarterback head coach duo in the NFL? Starters only. Sorry, Jimmy. My pick would be Green Bay. Talk about suppressed sexual tension. Seattle or Sneaky Titans, maybe Sleeper Steelers. P.S. Need some merch. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because we're working on this, merch. This, this is right up my alley. I love great, topics like this. Topic. You know, I, I would say McVeigh and LaFleur are pretty good looking dudes. LaFleur probably, you know, McVeigh for some might be a little, you know, kind of buffed up. LaFleur's a little more, maybe a little taller, a little slimmer, a little just... Good looking dude. Rogers honestly has really aged. I mean, he's he's 37 guy. He looks like he's 48. Like you just put him and Tom next to each other. Tom looks younger than Aaron Rodgers. I would give LaFleur. I actually got a sleeper one for you. The Titans. Vrabel. I think a lot of women find Vrabel. Put it in the theory. It's sneaky Titans. Oh, I'd put the Titans. Tannehill's a good looking guy. Yeah. Because because I would say Stafford, you know. I'd say Kyle looks good, and Jimmy obviously is very good looking, but Jimmy is no longer the 49ers quarterback, right? And Trey, as a bald man, <laughs> hold, holding on for dear life there, guy. Rasheed Wallace? That's why I've been saving that name for our next Shave It or Save It. When's our next Shave It or Save It, huh? Who's going to submit something for Shave It or Save It? Well, a lot of people, guy, when old Frank retired, threw us uh, the guy named Jed, goes by oh, Jed York. When Frank Gore retired. Yeah. Did you, did you happen to see that picture? I did happen to see that picture because a lot of people DM'd it to me too. Um, what do you think about Jed's hairline there? Yeah, it's tough. I think he's in a tough. I don't know if Bicked Bald is going to be his best look. Well, why not just go really short then? Yeah, I think that might be a that might be a good option. As just listen, I'm not. I don't know the guy personally, but as just a, a, a someone who evaluates bald people, I don't think he can do what he's doing much longer. 
Can you do you agree? Well, I mean, there's a, a, a level of wealth where, where you can do whatever you want and nobody says a word. LeBron. Yeah. Kevin. Uh, I, yep. I mean, those guys play in a league where bald's cool. Just shave your head. What I, are we doing? I know. Uh, you know, if you don't want to be bald, you don't want to be bald. Uh, I got one for you. Just looking through the league here. So you're going okay. with the Titans. I it, I know a woman. A if I if I was a woman, I'd want Vrabel. So I, I I know a woman well who uh, her husband's a college football coach. I know both of them. They're wonderful people. And um, he played at A and M. They both went to A and M. And I remember when Tannehill was coming out, her and her friends. Their nickname for Tannehill was. Uh, uh, what was the movie? The famous movie. It was like a book that became a movie with the guy. Christian no book. Gray. Gray. Uh, oh, uh, Gray's, uh, Gray's Anatomy. Uh, not Gray's Anatomy. Uh, yeah, with the Christian H&M. Gray. A lot of yeah, H&M. I know, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Not the notebook. The opposite of the notebook, right? I, yeah, Christian Gray. Uh, Fifty Shades. Their nickname yeah. for Tannehill was Fifty Shades. <laughs> so you going to uh, go with I, them too? No, I got a sleeper one. I don't know if it's a sleeper, but I'm just looking through the league here. How about the Jets? Sala and Zach Wilson. Sala is a very good looking guy. Zach Wilson's beautiful. I think people would probably say He's very good looking. Um, there, there may be a girl walking around in the background here that has a massive crush on Robert Sala. So I, I think Robert Sala is viewed as a very, very good wow. looking guy. I think a, th- a thing for baldies. I, I think what I think he's just, he is a good looking bald guy, right? You and I yeah. have been close. Like he, he pulls it off. Well, now I think the key to him as someone that, you know, didn't wear a hat last week at 49 is the, is his skin tone. It's just remarkable, right? It's perfect. Right. It's always the, I, I, I honestly, I think it's kind of crazy that he never, I, every practice we'd ever been, he never wore a hat. Is that like his sleeper hack? I don't know how, how we, who, um, risky as a football coach, right? That's a I lot got, of fun. Yeah. You know, who's very good looking is Jalen hurts. Um, he actually is. He's a good looking dude. But does his is his coach up to par for this list? Sirianni just feels actually just like a normal guy. He's not bad he? looking. I mean, we're you know, we're but I don't know if we would say he's classically I actually think you might have hit it. I think the Jets are an underrated Arians back when he was the coach and Tom. Todd's, you know, Todd's not the greatest. I actually checked guy. Todd. I mean, that you know, it's he's um, not bad looking. They're guy. not at the bottom of the, yeah, they're they're um. Okay. Yeah. Would, that's the, very would, good would McCarthy make the Cowboys? I and- did think about going Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> I did think about going Dallas. Yep. Yeah, you beat me to that one. Yeah. Um, Chiefs. Kirk Cousins doesn't really with O'Connell. No, no. no. O'Connell's yeah. a good-looking guy. I actually know yeah. a girl that in college at San Diego State that used to. They used to. Hang out. I mean, they, I would say they were they dated in college when he was the quarterback, and he was viewed, I think, a lot like Tannehill, like on a in a good looking campus, San Diego State, as like one of the best looking humans on the campus, right? Quarterback, oh. tall. Think about Belichick. I drafted Kevin O'Connell, drafted Cliff Kingsbury, sneaky Brady, like has a thing for good looking tall quarterbacks for being a short curmudgeon. By the way, think about Belichick. <laughs> good point. He did pull Cooper up. Linda. <laughs> Uh, next up, John, here's a YouTube question. This was in response to our, uh, to a Trey Lance video we did last week. And, uh, right, it's not really a question, but something we can uh, dive into it says, uh, this is from Ains. They got a two to three year window here with players in their prime. All they got to do is give the Niners two to three explosive plays a game and avoid a sack or two. And this team's going to be hard to beat. And then Marcellus replies and says, nah, it's more like a four to five year window. All the great players are in their mid twenties except Trent Williams and George Kittle. So the question that I pulled out of this for us is like, what is a, what is a window? And I think in the NFL windows are like three, two or three years. And then you got to open a new window. Well, do you view the, the chief's window? Are they transitioning to a new window? New window. They're in a new window. Yeah. Now Mahomes, like your, if your quarterback's great, then you can keep opening all these windows, but bills you window know, the Patriots were multiple windows with are the, Brady. they were I would say they were three different windows are would you say the Bucks same window as they've been the last couple of years or new window new coach uh feels like the same window I would say new co- I mean new coach changes things but it feels like it's the same would you say Rams window changed when Stafford showed up uh that was definitely a new window yeah so would the Niners be starting a new window this year if Trey Lance is starting quarterback 
They are. But I think it's still, you're still, okay, is Debo, is Debo three more years of great football or five more years of great football? He what is, is 25 he? years old, not 30, right? I, yeah, I understand. But it's just, you are going to need, is Ayuk just, if, if okay, look, if he's five years and Ayuk is just coming to his own and, you know, you've nailed a few of these offensive linemen develop. Um, defensively, Bosa's got several good years. You've just drafted. You, you It's not inconceivable that they're, starting a new like four-year window that's okay but i mean we're talking about some of the same players that took them to the nfc championship game last year right three years ago right kittle and, warner and, yeah so i mean it's like so are you saying this is like an eight yes mcglinchy it's like an eight-year window <laughs> like that those usually don't exist now i would say like mccordy and edelman were on multiple windows right Gronk. yeah that's true so it's you're gonna have some players that transcend it I would say, honestly, feel good about this squad, the squad that you and I have had seen at practice. That includes Trent, too. Like, minimum these next 34 games. It's like, time is now. And uh, next, Justin. This was about a video we did about um, uh, Juwan Jennings and Brandon Ayuk. With this kind of depth, it looks like there won't be any playing time for Danny Gray. It looks bleak at the moment. And then six replied and said speed always finds a way to get onto the field so with mandatory otas done how much of an impact does it feel like danny gray's gonna be i actually am inclined i mean the guy missed some practice time with a hammy um he's not one of their top three receivers right now really he's not one of their top four if you had kittle once Debo finds yeah i mean I, I would say that it's a work in progress i i, I wouldn't feel good about saying anything in concrete with him now he, you have to make the team. Like they can't cut him and put him on practice squad, right? He'd get immediately claimed. So, I would say, as the information that we have right now, he is down on game day, right? He makes a team and isn't is in the sweats on the sideline. Yeah. Now the information they, we have right now, which can they, change. They they have not been a team that's had great uh, receiver like consistent health, right? Ayuk has been in and out over the course of his young career. Although it was, I think, a little better last year. We'd have to check. I don't think he missed a game, did he? Yeah. So maybe that's maybe that's an old take. That's I mean, your old take on Ayuk. Juwan hasn't really had to play like he will yeah. now. And I, I don't think this is the worst thing in the world, right? It's one thing if you can't get on the field because you're not good enough. I don't think anyone expected coming into this year that Danny Gray was better than any of the guys we just mentioned, right? Yeah. No one when they drafted him where they drafted him, Juwan Jennings was already ahead of him. So was Ayuk, Debo, and Kittle. Um Dwelly. So it's going to be very specific. Dwelly, it's going to be different role. Going to be very specific, the usage for him. And, you know, it's going to be on Kyle Shanahan to dial up opportunities for him. And, and Trey Lance to hit him. Yeah, true that.